Well, well, well. What's going on, people? I think this one is going to be called Mixed Solutions or something to that effect. Uh, redundant. Yeah, that's it. Redundant. Redundant solutions. Because let me tell you something about Negroes. One thing I've always known about black people is black people will create excuses to not move forward. That I know for sure. And um, when it comes to my videos, you have your haters. Your haters are usually those who uh, are the ones spoken of. Uncle Tom House niggers, coons, uh, and those types of individuals. And people who are just trying to shut the word down because they're a coon operator. And uh, if you feel this is about you, then, you know, it's about you. I mean, if you feel guilty about it, then there's a good reason you should uh, hate this. But anyways... Black people, what they do is they create excuses. First they say, all you do is talk. You don't attack the white man. But the people I talk about, they don't attack the white man. And um, they say, how are you helping black people? What are your solutions? Then when you come out in detail, part of your solutions then what is expected from black people happens they critique the solution they hate on the solution they uh, tell you the solution has been tried before well if it has been tried before show me the failure I see other people trying the solution and it's working out. What they do is they hate on the solution because the solution did not come from them. They want people to adopt their solution, which is to run and hide. I mean, that's not a solution. I mean, <laughs> these guys, and it's not just one because we do have one guy... Uh, that I was piecing it out with, but I guess he's starting to backtrack. And he's been having a, a whole lot of things festering in his mind. And it's probably a little bit because his homeboy is probably, you know, they started calling him out. So I guess he's trying to show them, hey, I'm still on your side. That's fine. I mean, you don't have to hate another man to show your homeboys, hey, man, we're still cool. So... You know, people reject viable, more realistic solutions. Negroes reject education. I mean, these Negroes make excuses. Matter of fact, they're uh, fulfilling the stereotype that blacks have uh, about not wanting education. They make excuses. Oh, it costs too much. Uh, you can't get a job with it. Nothing's happening. Any excuse. And these are the same ones without the education. And of course, the Freemason ones are the ones with the education telling you, well, they're not telling you not to get educated. They're not even trying to promote that, even though they went and got that. So if you don't want to get educated because you say it's a part of the white man's system, and some people say, well, if you're not educating, uh, of trying to improve the condition of a people or a nation then it's strictly for personal enrichment well what's wrong with that I mean some people could be turned around and work for the group even not everybody's going to work for the group even if they're a part of the group and someone who you know Angel Snup Nup 7 brought up Bill Gates uh, saying he had, uh, I doubt Bill Gates had improving the USA on his mind. 
funny these people's bank accounts don't show loyalty to some nation. Bill Gates and others could refurbish a state, but they don't. But they don't. So my opinion is flawed. Motherfucker, it's an opinion. Uh, and your rebuttal is flawed because Bill Gates could refurbish a state, but that's not Bill Clinton's. That's not Bill Gates' job. That's the job of the government. Is either the uh, look out for the country or stop putting restrictions on people to look out for themselves. Bill Gates is rich, as we know. Bill Gates is working for a nation. A nation of white people. Because he's down with the so-called New World Order. He's working towards that. So he is working and has a loyalty to a nation. You had a loyalty to a nation. In name. Nation of Islam. But obviously they weren't working towards nothing. And um... And people are worried about the, the time that I took to speak. And I'm sure they only say that because I made the comment of those two knuckleheads uh, uh, spending five hours uh, to retort something that I said when they couldn't even retort it when they were speaking to me. You know, that th those are plain facts. I mean, people can always talk about you after... Uh, you say what you have to say, but when it's time to engage line for line, point for point, they can't do that. It's easy to talk junk after the fact. And um, But again, black people reject education. You have to be stupid to do that. I mean, where else are you going to get educated? Africa? What are they going to teach you in Africa? African leaders, including the dictators, got educated in the West. Now they're getting educated in China. I mean, come on. Uh, what do you think people are supposed to do? Not get educated? You're supposed to be stupid? Not know how to do math? Not know how to read? Just because of somebody else's uh, creation? Doesn't make any sense. You're in this society... You better learn to get along. You got these Indians and Asians, as I continue to say and talk about. They come here not even knowing the damn language half the time. But they get to it. So there's no excuse except that you're an idiot. That's the only excuse. And I acknowledge that not all college degrees and college educations result in work. But yet... Negroes criticize people getting a degree to work. <laughs> That's what he just said. So, which is it? You get a degree to build a nation, or do you get a degree to build your own job and take care of your family? You don't want people to get a degree at all to do anything. And building a nation, first of all, everybody has to be on board. See, this is why I say... That I'm not trying to talk or convince anybody into my points. You either have to be down or you're not. Because I'm not wasting my time with people who are not down. Because everybody has their own ideas. If we all get to the same place with different ideas, fine. But you don't hear me putting down other people's ideas on how to get this done. Because I want you to do it. That's all I'm saying. You know, go out there and do it. If you have an idea, get to it. And if yours works, fine. If mine doesn't work, fine. If yours works, that's, that's, that's the way to go, apparently. Obviously, black people only get down with things that work. You know, they critique what they can't envision. See, that's why my interim plan and long-term plan is not about complex things. It's not about uh, uh, dreams that you uh, wish would come true but you're not 
really thinking about actively participating in. Like a lot of people say, hey, man, we got to get the Arabs out of Africa. We got to get the Chinese out of Africa. But you don't step foot in Africa to even do these things. I mean, it's just a dream. It's just bullshit. It's talk. That's what I'm trying to get out of. The talking phase and get into the doing phase. But Negroes, the, the, the broke ones and the successful ones working for the white man, they want us to stay in the talking phase like the Nation of Islam. They just keep us in the talking phase, never the doing phase. And I think a lot of black people, if they're not working for the white man, they're afraid of success. They're, they're afraid to see the goal line because when they see it, you know, they get nervous. Like I said before, it's like Peyton Manning. I mean, he was great in the regular season of the NFL when it didn't matter. You know, he, he, he looked good, got his stats up, everything. But um, once it did matter in the playoffs, then all of a sudden, my man couldn't hang. He couldn't get it done. And that's the way a lot of these Negroes are. You know, they, some of them can look good uh, when it doesn't matter. But when it does matter, they're nowhere to be found. So, you know, these guys, they tell you that your plan won't work. You talk too long. Like, I'm the only one who's long-winded. At least when I talk about something, every point is important. Every point has a purpose. And you notice I don't really repeat myself often. You know? But other guys, they know how to speak. They get emotional. You know, to try and uh, make it look like they're serious. But when it comes to doing, they can't show it. You know, we've had people speak long enough. We don't need talking anymore. We need action. It's like if you're with your girl and... <laughs> She wants to get to it. And all you're doing is talking because you're like, damn, I don't know if I can get to it. I don't know if I can represent. So you want to keep on talking. And after a while, she's like, man, the hell with this. Either you're going to do something or I'm going to find somebody who will. See, that's where black people need to go. Blacks who reject education are cooned out, in my opinion. And um, I'm just saying this bluntly. You have to be a fool to reject education. Like I said before, not everybody can be a scholar. We know that. You know, that's why some people are the muscles, some people are the soldiers, some people are the support. You know, you got to get in where you fit in, but everybody can help. But you cannot have either a nation or a successful group where everybody is a fucking idiot and everybody's smoking weed. And everybody said, man, fuck reading books. Fuck education. I don't give a fuck about that. The Asians, like I keep pointing out because they're the most successful at it, they look at what the white man has done and they say, we need to know what he knows. At the very least. That's what the white man has done. He saw the black man. He saw the Asian. He said, we need to know what they know. At the very least. Once they know what we knew. Then they can take it to the next level. Which they have. That's what the Asians do. That's what they're doing. But black people. They want to carry on with these fucking pipe dreams. These idiotic dreams. That's what I'm calling them. Idiotic. This Africa bullshit. Let's go back to Africa. You got other groups that. um Tell you. Africa is the way. Uh, we're Africa. We're African. Let's go to an African country and set up shop. Then when you ask these Negroes the question, how come your black ass didn't go there? They avoid it. If they avoid it, then they're bullshitting on the answer. It's Marcus Garvey all over again. You talk this African bullshit to seduce and to brainwash black Americans and to keep us off of our goals and our direction. 
But none of you bastards. That's what I'm saying. Bastards. I don't care who gets mad. Because I'm talking to everybody who has this mindset. Some of you bastards keep talking this Africa shit. This Marcus Garvey bullshit. But Marcus Garvey himself did not go to Africa. He had the opportunity to go to Africa. But he didn't. Instead, he decided to come to the United States and try to convince us to go to Africa. That's what these other Negro groups and outfits and con men do. They try to convince us to go to Africa. While they speak for Africans and Caribbeans, but they're not telling the Caribbeans and the Africans, don't come to the United States, are they? They're telling us, go to Africa. Why the fuck do they want to keep us going to Africa? But of course, none of us are. Because none of these motherfuckers are going to Africa. So, you got to lead by example with this Mississippi thing. Like I said, it could be a good idea if somebody who came up with the idea were to demonstrate how it could work. But see, when these people say, go to Africa, let's go to Mississippi, all they're really doing is trying to talk somebody else into it. And when people try to talk you into it, that means they want you to uh, go into the, put your foot in the uh, Lake of Piranha first so they can see what happens. That's what they're trying to do. But we want to see you put your foot in the Lake of Piranha first so we can see what happens. You know, once you make it out alive, then okay, we'll follow. But before you could do that, we need to see something. Because hearing something is not good enough. Uh, yeah, I'm about to make a joke. You can watch porn. I'm, I'm sorry, you can listen to porn. You can get an idea of what's happening. But a lot of times, uh, what you're hearing may not be what is being seen. So, what you have to do, you have to suspend the talking and you have to get to the doing. Others who keep telling us, let's go to Africa, let's set up shop in Africa. Running away from the white man is the only way that we'll survive. How come you guys have not gone to Africa? Now, some of you have gone to Africa to visit, and you've shown us the footage, but how come you didn't set up shop? How come you didn't buy a home or build one? I'm sure it should be easy to build a, a nice quality home in Africa out of brick and uh, modern uh, architecture. But, of course you don't because you see the way they live out there and you're like, God damn, I can't do this. I can't do it. <laughs> you know that. You know damn well uh, living in a lot of parts of Africa is worse than living in the project projects of any country, any city in this country. You know that. You know damn well when the housing projects looks more attractive than your so-called motherland. You know you're not going over there. Stop that. Especially you guys getting that uh, super chat money. I think that's what it's all about. I, I really hate to say it. Because, again, these guys get the super chat. They on every day. Where's the money going to get you to Africa? You went to visit. So I'm sure you can go to stay. Right? But you don't want to stay because you know damn well that's not your motherland. And you know damn well the culture is alien to you. And you don't want to deal with that. But you claim that that's the solution. Go to Africa. Run away from the white man like a runaway slave. I mean, come on. Again, if that were the solution, god damn it, you would be doing it. But that's how we know it's not the solution. Black people since Marcus Garvey's time and the black militants of the 60s and 70s, you know, they've all been convinced that Africa is the way to go. Africa, Africa, Africa. 
Africa, Africa, Africa. But they never went there. Some, like I said, they've gone there in exile to run away from the law. <laughs> That's the only thing that really got them to Africa. But who went to live there? And when some of them did go there, did they change anything? Did they influence uh, politics? Did they enrich the lives of the Africans uh, where they went to? No. So that's a so-called solution that has not worked and it will not work. I know that that won't work. Now the only way you can prove that it will is to get your asses out there and show us that it'll work. Once you show people that it'll work, others will follow. But as long as you're keeping your ass here and not moving, everybody else is going to say, well, I'll keep my ass here and just talk about it to make them feel good about what they're talking about. I mean, come on. You know, it's kind of crazy how black people are, but like I said, this is how black people do. We like to talk. We like the BS. We like to run game, especially... If it's bringing in money. I told you the Nation of Islam. Uh, paying African hustle. Is just to. Get into that bridge. Where you're talking about doing. You look like you're doing something. You're being mean. Like you want to do something. But ultimately. The goal is to do nothing. But keep the money coming in. Uh, uh, under the premise. That you are about to do something. But when people add up the years. What are we talking now? 80, 88 years? And nothing has happened. Now I know some people say, well, Elijah Muhammad had this, that, and the other. Yeah, had. But those are their own things. They didn't really share it with the Nation of Islam people. And my man Angel Snuff, uh, Snuffed Up 7 himself has told you that many times. That none of that matriculated down to, to him or any common uh, rank and file nation of Islam guy. It was always with the top people, like any nation, any kingdom. You know, people want to become the top person not because they want to help people, they want it because they want to feed their ego and get all the money and the riches that they can, and the sex and drugs. That's all it's all about. That's all it's been about for thousands of years. And that's why they don't mind killing whoever they have to kill. It's the same thing. You know? That's why people who sell out to the so-called Illuminati, they don't mind doing that. Because these are the same people who would probably kill somebody to get some money. You know? So, hey, if I got to do this, that, and the other, and you're going to make these opportunities happen, all I have to do is stay committed. Why not? That's how some people operate. You know, then you got that so-called Dr. Reggie. Uh, again, with that bullshit. Anti-black uh, bl anti man thing. It's like, if you don't come from Asia, if you don't come from Africa, you're not a black man. But if you're in Africa, see, they got the same talking points of the white man, the white races. So, these niggas are Freemasons. And that's all they're doing is mimicking what the white man, their white master, tells them. I'm going to come with a video after a while. I'm going to drop that heat. These guys are amateur. That's why they don't debate anybody outside of their circle. I mean, come on. Debating everybody in your same little club? That's not a debate, man. That's bullshit. Because it's like these guys in these Afri Pan-African groups. When you ask the right questions, they don't want to answer because the right questions are the wrong questions to them. Because people like me, I ask questions that get right to the point and they're, they're linchpin questions. Once I ask the question, it's going to be a question that's going to break your whole shit, <laughs> depending on how you answer. That's why most of these cons, they prefer to avoid it. You know, they avoid it by calling you a nigger, a coon, 
a, a troll, a house nigger, self-hater, you know, anything they can come up with just to get away from the question, you know? And um, it's sad. But see, this is why I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do so we can get, get rid of these go-nowhere, do-nothing Negroes and their redundant solutions. Yeah, this is a good title, Redundant Solutions, because that's all they do. I mean, we, like I said before, we had the getaway to Africa solution. That's Marcus Garvey. Nobody was talking that shit before Marcus Garvey. And like I said, the evidence shows that Marcus Garvey was a foreign national, as you know, you know that to be true, who came here with the express purpose of trying to gather black Americans up and, and have us go to Africa, while his own Jamaicans continue to flock to the United States. You gotta ask yourself the question, why these pan-Africanists, the same thing, they want us to leave. Nation of Islam. Same thing. And we know they all come from the Freemasonry. And foreigners. Their whole solution for black America. Is you get the fuck out of here. One way or the other. But my people from the Caribbean Africa. You keep coming in. And like I said. When you look at the film. TV. Sports. It's clear that we're being replaced. And people been longing to replace us because we can't be African because if we were African why do you want us to go to Africa but you want Africans to come here makes no sense and I challenge any one of you to get with me on this but see people run scared when Alquan is on the scene because you know you're going to get your ass bust you know I take on two, three, four at a time. It doesn't matter. Now, I ain't trying to brag, but I already know I'm a win because I already know that you people are going to be lying. So you got to keep scrambling to defend the lie. While all I got to do is speak the truth. And not the truth as I know it, the truth as it is. And we find out the truth by asking simple questions. It's that simple. So, it's very dangerous when Negroes reject education. That's dangerous. Who else does that in this country? The African, the Caribbean. You don't see them going around rejecting education. In fact, they can't wait to get educated when they come here. You want to follow them in pan-Africanism. How come you don't follow them on the education standpoint? Because that's something they do love to do when they get here. And you know that. So where do you guys really want to lead us? That's the question. You know, I know where I'd like to lead us. I want us to be on even keel with everyone else. As far as our standing in society. We're already above others when it comes to uh, anything that we get into. That's why they keep us down. But on a regular level, this is one thing we know for certain. We know that in a, a middle class, upper middle class, and beyond neighborhood, we know that white people know that black people, black Americans in particular, should not be in that neighborhood and they're most likely not from there. But when it comes to an East Indian or an Asian, they know or assume that they should be there because they go to school with them. They go to functions around town with them. They marry them. That's why they know those people. That's why they're cool with those people. And they know that black Americans are not supposed to be there. Mexicans you see around those hoods, but they're the domestics. I see them in rich hoods, coming from rich people's homes, taking a bus home or Uber home. 
I mean, you're working for millionaires and billionaires. Motherfuckers won't even give you a ride home. You go back to the concentration camp. In the meantime, that concentration camp is our hoods. Or was. See, we don't control our own destiny. So for you guys who keep saying we need to go to foreign countries or even a state in this country with no money in our pockets and just think we're going to take over, that's craziness. And when you think about it, what these Pan-Africanists say, it's, they're talking about doing the same exact thing that they claim to hate the white man for. Taking over Africa and taking black people as slaves. When you're trying to take over something, that's what the white man did. In East Indians, Asians, they are taking over sectors of business. Taking over. That's what you're talking about. Taking over a state uh, or going to Africa and taking over and doing whatever the hell you want to do there. Which you have an outline, of course. You know, but the, the premise itself is ridiculous because you don't, how are you going to, you, you tell me one place that you can go to with no money in your pocket and take it over without doing it by force. Matter of fact, you tell me how you could take something over by force with no money. I'll be waiting. But these Negroes. They want to convince you of these fair fantasies and fairy tales. And all it is is stagnation. I know they're going to be mad. I know they're going to be pissed off and say, oh, man, here we go. And they can go off all they want to. But, hey, I didn't reignite the battle. You know, you let those two knuckleheads uh, uh, reignite it because they're looking for YouTube views and hits and stuff for their idiotic uh, views and opinions. But, again, keep in mind, this is not just about you. You need to keep that in mind. It's about others as well. And, um, like I said, if, you, if it sounds like it's talking about you, then it probably is you. But, again, when it comes to education, how can you knock that? You know, there was another guy I was listening to who dismisses formal education in this country. <laughs> and he was acting like, um, you know, the same excuses. You don't need the white man's education. You're working for the cracker. But he proved the, the reasons we need to be formally educated. Because this guy said something about uh, he, him studying the four cynic sciences. I was saying to myself, hmm, that sounds kind of deep. The four cynic sciences. And I was like, well, hold up. What the hell is four cynic? <laughs> then I said, oh, this guy means forensic. Ah, boy. I said, this is why I say black people need at least an associate's degree. Just so you can, that, that alone is enough to get you to thinking and get you to studying the way you need to study. Yes, within this system, because this is the way it's set up. What are you going to do? Go left when the, everybody else is going right? Doesn't make any sense. The Indian and the Asian could do it even though they're not harassed, they're not targeted like we are. And neither is the Caribbean. Uh, or the African, like I said, if we were Africans, how come Africans are treated better when they get here and they're not treated like us? That's a valid, one of my valid questions that I ask. <laughs> and for you people who are down with Pan-Africanism, I want you to answer that question. If we're Africans, how come Africans are treated better than we are? You would think we would be treated the same. Either we get treated with the respect that they get, or they get treated with the hatred that we get. But that's not the case. 
That's one of those uh-oh questions that people who are phonies want to avoid answering. So, you know, we're at a crossroads. See, my thing is I don't need to talk for 99 years. We don't have to. We have to get to it. This is why I leave the Negroes alone. If you don't agree with what I'm trying to do, run along. And you concentrate on what you're trying to do. If what you're trying to do works, that's fine. I can't hate on it. Uh, but if you're only talking about what you're trying to do or what you dreamed of doing, then obviously it's going nowhere and it's do nothing. I need to see do something. Even those guys going to Africa. You lead the damn way. Why do you keep talking about going to Africa? You keep trying to talk other people into going. You go. It's that simple. If, you, if that's the solution... It's that simple. Sell all of your things. Translate that to money. Pick an African nation. And go there. But you have not. And you will not. Because your pan-African master. Marcus Garvey. Did not. When he could have. So no matter all the stuff you people talk. If I don't see the action, then you're just talking bullshit. And that's where I come into play because I'm tired of the bullshit. That's why you see me, I get to the point. I get to the heart of the matter. I don't keep talking, trying to string people along, you know, because that's a waste of time. We don't need, we already wasted enough time. You know, it's bad enough we got the Freemasons like uh, D.R. York and his... Uh, one of his little sons, Prince York. You know, D.R. York. Let's get right. Let's get real. You know, damn well he calls himself Dr. York. For one reason and one reason only. York Wright Masons. That's, that's, the, that's the only reason why. See, black people, when they get into Freemasonry, they like to go all out and tell the white man, see, I'm all in, white man. I'm uh, dressed like one, uh, Egyptian, live my life like one. Keep moving me up a level. That's what it's all about. That's why you have these people saying it's not about race, even though it is because those in control are white. And how come white Freemasons want to change the race of the Egyptians that they worship? Huh? That's a clear question you should ask, but of course... They don't want to ask those questions. See, the Masons, the Coons, they cause nothing but confusion. That's why all they do is talk. And then when somebody is trying to offer real solutions that you can actually do, then they want to come, they want to put it down. Because they don't want you to do anything. That's what it's all about. Just like they don't want to do anything. They could go to Mississippi. What's stopping you from going to Mississippi? What's stopping you from going to Africa? You are. I mean, nobody else is holding you back. You are the one who's, who puts the idea out there. But you're the one saying, well, shit, I ain't going. But uh, I'm going to try and talk you into going. Come on. <laughs> Why do you have to talk others into going? You do that when you don't want to do it. We know that as children. Hey man, why don't you go in that abandoned house? You go in there first. Nah man, I ain't going in there. Why don't you go in there? Shit man. You're the one who's cool, that's why. You go in there. So, you know, that's all it is. A bunch of BS. Lip service. We don't need lip service. When Farrakhan dies, if you ask yourself, matter of fact, you can ask Nation of Islam members now, what the fuck has he done? And the answer 
realistically. Now, Nation of Islam members, they give you a drawn out lying answer, but the truth, the, 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 the real answer is Farrakhan has done nothing. Those are the facts. And the reason why he's done nothing is because he's a Freemason. And he's not a black American because he doesn't care about us anyway. He keeps trying to... Again, the Nation of Islam mantra is separate from the white man. Again, separation. But again, the Nation of Islam has not separated from the white man. So that's the thing. That's, this is how you can judge who's real and who's not. You got to ask the right questions. Ask the questions that'll pull the carpet from underneath their feet and their whole premise. If they avoid answering questions, if they give you a bullshit answer that addresses what you said but doesn't answer what you said, these people are up to something. These people have agendas, and their agendas are different from what they're portraying. You know, this is why nobody in their right mind would debate me. This is why I got to slip in on Sodnetta TV. You know, but that one hour round table thing I did. I bet you if I would have gotten too specific, too challenging. Then I would have been called a coon, a disruptor, and blah, blah, blah. And then they would have cut me off. So that's why you got to kind of ease in there like that. You know, when it comes to real people, like these two guys. What is it? Nollywood, Afrikaan. As much as I've given them information to pull the carpet from underneath their feet of this pan-African stuff. They still choose to believe what they want to believe because they don't want to change it, number one, and they must be up to something. Because if it's been proven that you can't prove what you allege, why would you want to stick with it? And these are the same people who will say, you can't prove Jesus, you can't prove God. So why would you want to stick with it? I proved the Bible to be wrong. If these are the same people who are doing this kind of thing or saying these things, how come when it comes to this pan-African bullshit, they can't say, you know what, I'm wrong. Let me change my ways. Well, if you look at their avatars and their names, it's pretty clear that they're not going to change their ways because that's how they have branded themselves. You know, red, black, and green, Afrikan, all that kind of shit. They're not going to change because now they're kind of trapped. It's like all these other Pan-Africanists. No matter how much you prove it to them, they can't change. They don't want to change because now, for some, it has become a business, even though I'm sure these are propagandists. And I told you the so-called conscious uh, community, they're all agents. I mean, let's get that out of the way right now. They're all agents. It was created for coons, created to trick black people. That's why Marcus Garvey and Pan-Africanism is number one on the list. Then when you show the people and tell the people that the Pan-African heroes were liars... They were coons because they married white women. The pan-Africanists, they start making excuses. What's wrong with marrying a white woman? <laughs> but these are the same people that talk about the cracker. These are the same people who, who tell you we have to get away from the white man. Well, which is it, man? Do you want to marry the white man and his woman? Or do you want to get away? Do you want to look out for Africa and the as African diaspora? Or do you want to get away? Or do you want to get with the white man? Which is it? See, you can't have it all. 
when people start making excuses for linchpin questions, they're lying. It's, it's just that, that simple. Now, here, I can challenge anybody here. You see how I do in the comment section. People ask me questions all the time. I answer. And see, the thing about me, see, I know how to handle Negroes. Because I know Negroes are waiting to ask questions that they hope that I can't answer or will not answer. Those are the questions I make sure I do answer. And you notice, once I do answer those kind of, kinds of questions, the people disappear. <laughs> that's, that's, it's, see, the reason I do it is because I like to get to the point. You know, I know when people come with BS, I like to squash the BS and just get to the point so we don't have to come up with that uh, subject matter again. But black people like to repeat things. And you don't hear me repeating the same talking points for over 50 years like a lot of black people do. What do you hear? You always talk about King, Malcolm, Marcus Garvey, uh, Black Panthers, all the time. Over and over and over and over again. I mean... Those times are gone. Those people either got shot down or their organizations got redirected and uh, dominated by others. It ultimately fizzled out. So we need to talk about something new. People say, my solutions, even though they don't even know the whole solution, that's, that's why I call it the interim solution. That you can do on your own before we get it together. But Negroes don't even want to do that. Which goes to show that you can't even go anywhere to even finish your own solution. Because you can't even get that started. Why do you think the CIA and the FBI recruit people in college? Number one, those people are usually intelligent. Not to say that only people in college are intelligent because a lot of people are book smart, lack common sense, or other types of uh, intellectual ways. But they see that when you're in college, that shows that you are dedicated to something and you have a commitment towards finishing something. In other words, you're not lazy. They're weeding out the lazy. They're weeding out the idiots. That's why they go to college. And they want to make sure they get their hands on the, the intellectuals, the smart people, before somebody else does. Like, suppose you had a whole bunch of black scientists. The CIA would go to them and try to recruit them. Before, let's say, a black militancy uh, group with money, of course, <laughs> because in order to get them, you need some money. Um, they they prefer to have those people on their side working for them instead of working for you. But see, high school dropouts, they're not trying to recruit because they know, number one, you're not really that intelligent. And you're not committed to finishing anything. And they look at all the various reasons why you didn't finish. And they realize you're not a good fit for them. That's the same reason why Freemasons recruit out of college. And <laughs> yeah, I know they uh, recruit other places too. But those are usually the uh, low level ones. The ones who drink at the clubs and all that kind of stuff. But the higher ups is all to get people on their side and away from the other side. That's the same thing in sports. The Lakers got LeBron James. Somebody else probably could have gotten him. But you take a LeBron James, you take a whoever the hell you can get, even if you don't need him, it's taken away from the other team. Even if they don't do anything for you. You know, it's like the Toronto Raptors. You know, they got Kawhi Leonard. Even though he may not stay there. 
Uh, DeRozan went to San Antonio. San Antonio got the better deal. Because they have a player, while not as good as Kawhi Leonard, they know he's going to be locked in. I think it's two years he's locked in. Two or three years. So he can't go anywhere. So (laughs) that's a good deal. Toronto, on the other hand, you know, they got Kawhi Leonard. They think it's a steal. But instead, they got robbed. Because Kawhi Leonard is equivalent to that high school student who dropped out and won't go to college because he can't commit. He can't hang it out. He can't tough it out. So he leaves. So San Antonio says, we can't have this. This guy doesn't want to stay. Let him go someplace else. And be somebody else's problem. Now, Toronto, they're going to have to deal with uh, him after the, the upcoming season is over. So, this is what teams do. This is what people do. This is what nations do. They take your best. See, the white man, they'll take the Asian Indi- engineers, the Indian engineers. Even in the government, when uh, it comes to scientists uh, for nuclear power or anything else. They want the best brains from around the world. I'll pay you whatever it takes. Give you a home, blah, 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 so on and so forth. They want the best minds. Same thing with the company. You know, if they heard of you, they want you. If you're great. If they never heard of you and you're trying to say, hey, I'm great. They don't want you. (laughs) Because they're like, If you're that great, I would have heard of you. So, you know, that's how it goes, man. So, yes, that's water. So, um, we have redundant solutions. Solutions that have proven to either not go anywhere when attempted or, in general, never attempted in the first place. And that's what black people love to do. They act like they have a solution. But when you actually analyze the solution, it's a solution designed to stay stagnant, but to keep money coming in. That's the real solution, to keep the money coming in. Not to actually have a solution for black people. And again, This is why I say if you want a true solution for black Americans, you must disengage the Caribbean, disengage the African, even though we're not really engaged with them to begin with, the African that is. We're definitely engaged with the Caribbean, but we need to disengage from them, not to hate but so that we can concentrate on ourselves. And for all of you Caribbeans who think I just hate Caribbeans, like I said, let me repeat it. It's to concentrate on ourselves because time and time again, listen to them. Listen to all the Pan-Africanists. Every time they mention Pan-Africanism or the African diaspora or being an African, what are they always talking about? Everyone but black America. They're talking about how to make the Caribbean better, how to make Africa better. Never how to make black Americans better. And like I said, when you research these people, you will find that they're not even black Americans. That's why they talk this talk. Because they're not, they're just using us to help them. And I still believe they're working for the white man while they're doing it. So, these guys offer redundant, go-nowhere, so-called solutions. Solutions in name only. But, once you actually think about it, what they're offering, what they're saying, it's never going to come to fruition because the author of the solution is not taking the initiative and he's not taking the lead and he's not bringing his black ass to wherever the hell they say they want to go. I mean, how are you going to be a leader and come up with the idea 
and say, hey, I'm going to wait for everybody else to go. I bet you if there was a pile of money in the street, you wouldn't be waiting for everybody else to go. You say, oh, hell with that. I got to get there first. But when it comes to doing hard work that you can't see actually becoming a reality, then you say, you try to convince everybody else to go. That's the nature of black people. That's what Tariq Nasheed does. For some reason, he's really an agent provocateur. Because this guy keeps saying, man, we got to stop uh, just talking about the white supremacists. We got to start dealing with them. That's agent provocateur talk. And nobody's called him out on that? Um, and I'm talking about the white man? He's an agent. Anybody else talks that talk, you got to kill the white man. They're on their asses. But you got to look at who's delivering the message. Tariq Nasheed is sitting pretty in a mansion with his white woman and his white family and his mink slide uh, CDs <laughs> and his fat ass. I mean, this is what's going on. He is not concerned about white supremacy. But why do people keep trying to talk you into doing something that they are not doing and will not do? You gotta ask yourselves that question. And when you think about the answer, then you'll start saying, who are these people? Who do they work for? What are they trying to accomplish? If you notice, I never asked you to do a damn thing. Because like I said, these, what I suggest are things that you should be doing. But my apparatus is to make or persuade every black American to buy into the group. That's why I want to get things off the ground. That's what my donations to me will go towards. They're not going towards an S class. They're not going towards uh, me to read a book on uh, YouTube Live uh, and act like I did some damn research. That's, I mean, that's bullshit. You can see Sinatra got Reggie into that hustle. Donate to my PayPal. Oh, I got is four uh, donations. I need more. See, there goes that demanding shit. You got to give me more money. For what? So you can read a motherfucking book? Fuck that. Yeah, I'm pissed. Cause I'm tired of these guys. You know it's a hustle. Talking about research, reading the book. Man, come on. And that's another idiot, Reggie. Man, can't even pronounce words and shit. I mean, <laughs> this guy's a fucking idiot. And he's a teacher. And another fake doctor. Like I said, at least he has degrees. But it's, I think his degrees were in some computer stuff. So, he's supposed to be a master teacher because he knew Dr. Leonard Jeffries and Dr. Ben? I spoke to Dr. Ben. Okay, am, am I a master teacher now? I would say yes, one in a master teacher in reality and not bullshit in that regard. But any of these guys, man, I mean, they want to get at me. I say I like to go live one-on-one. -on -one. Two on two or two on one, however you want to do it. I like to go live. See, because uh, live, that's how you can tell what people know and what they don't know. You know what I mean? Because you, you got to pull all types of things out of your mind that you actually research when you do it live and impromptu. But when you got to go train like you're going to a fight, that's bullshit. So any of these bozos I'm willing to, to uh, debate. And uh, as long as the topic is something that's debatable. You know what I mean? Even this solutions topic. It's debatable, of course. But Negroes are stuck in their ways. They're going to, after this, they're going to make videos. I suspect that they probably won't be inviting me to a hangout anymore. Because they realize... <laughs> Now that I got my uh, six shooters on my hip, 
and they don't want none. So that's fine. But they'll make videos and they'll come back and say, hey, my solutions is the most viable solution for the black people. I advocate running away. <laughs> yeah, that's a solution. Run. Run, run, run. You know, it's like a, 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 somebody has a hit out on you. Are you going to keep on running? Eventually, they're going to get you. You know? So, you could run all you want. Like I said, taking over Mississippi, that's cool. But like somebody did suggest saying take over, that's threatening. And the truth be told, if you were going to do that kind of thing, you don't say, hey, black people. Let's take over a state like Mississippi, which coincidentally happens to be my man's home state. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't do that. See, East Indians, Asians, they don't say, yeah, we're going to take over this. But instead, you can see that they have taken over a certain business sector. East Indians have cornered the market on convenience. Convenience stores, gas stations. Motels, liquor stores, cigar stores, things like those, things that have repeat business, things that make people come back. The hotel, people always need a place to stay when they don't want to pay top dollar. Convenience store, we don't feel like going to a grocery store, you're not near one. Gas station, you have to have gas. Cigar stores now, that's the thing. Why? Tobacco is addictive. <laughs> you know, and they might be smart too. You think about that. They might have uh, gotten into that business in anticipation of weed becoming legal in certain states. Then they already got their stores set up to sell weed. That's why you need education. When you get education, you can think ahead. You see? When you're an idiot, you want to run. When you're an idiot, you don't want to challenge your fears. You just want to run away from it. You know, these are the same type of people when you had a test in school. Oh, man, this looks hard. Uh, yeah, teacher, uh, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Nah, there ain't no going to in the bathroom. You, you, you probably got the, the answers written down. No, I, no, I don't. I really got to go. All right. Better be back in five minutes, my man. Then you're like, okay, I got to go home. I got to play sick. So I don't have to take this test. You know, that's, that's the type of guys we're dealing with. But see, this is why you need education. So you can plan ahead with a group. If you plan by yourself... Or with some other knuckleheads. And ne none of you are doing anything. Then what are you accomplishing? Nothing. While you talk. Others are making moves. And you can believe their long term goals are something else. So the white man should look out for them. But instead he concentrates on us for some reason. But that's, that's how it is. Man they own. A, a, a sector a business and society from coast to coast that's the key thing from coast to coast and they keep importing more of their people in every day doing the same handoff businesses one day gas stations won't be around you can't deny that but so called Arabs and Indians are dominating the scene the white man seems to let them do this for some odd reason, but uh, black people need to get with it. Even Caribbeans have businesses. Jamaicans, they have their cultural foods that they can open up a, a Jamaican spot. People will go. You know, Jamaican food, parts of it, it's not bad. You know, same thing with Puerto Rican food, it's not bad. Now, there are African restaurants, but, you know, I don't hear too many people going to these particular restaurants because, you know, different countries have different foods. That's why you see some so-called Middle Eastern 
uh, Middle Eastern uh, restaurants. They'll um, combine uh, Turkish, so-called Arab, and uh, North African. They'll, they'll combine it all together. Even though the truth be told, and I said this before, most of what you think is Arab food or culture is really Turkish. Truth be told. I'm going to do something on that. Right now we're an hour and five minutes. And I'm sure that some will say, Brother Alquan, you talk for an hour and five minutes when you could have summed it up in five minutes. Yeah, I could have. I could have. But I took this time to explain and extrapolate. That's why you need an education to understand that word. <laughs> All I'm saying, if black people want to be stupid, you follow stupid ideas. If you're ready to get with it, you're tired of the talking, you're tired of the BS, then you follow, follow or get with me. But I'm not telling people to only get with me and uh, dismiss everybody else. You follow whatever appeals to you. But in the end, something's got to work. The Indian and the East and the East Asian, they're showing you what works. Teamwork and a network and a system works. When everybody's not trying to be the top man and everybody knows their place and knows that eventually they will get their turn at bat. That's how it works. Once we do that, once we figure that out and stop talking and start getting to it, then we can hit that home run and win that World Series. But as of now, we're not even in the minor leagues. 